G'day scrappers, welcome to part three of the scrap marathon and uh, well I've gotten down a lot of my circuit boards that I came in recently. This is uh, my second barrel of uh, mid-grade boards, I've already taken one into my buyer, this is the second one that's just filled up and I'm going to take in. So uh, a lot of mid-grade boards have been processed in the last day or so. So I've got a feeling I'm going to be getting into the garage finally this video and uh, getting out some of the stuff and just clearing out and sort of making way through. So uh, what I do need is a spare wheelie bin just to put things that I'm keeping in there um, uh, to get it out the way, you know. And uh, so this is probably the best wheelie bin for me to start processing and clearing this out anyway. Uh, this is all the surveillance stuff that's been sitting here for like, um, geez, nearly two years, I reckon. Uh, it's been a long time. I just never really got around to it and never really wanted to. Um, so uh, some of this has already been pre-processed when I took them all out of the packaging. Um, that was a big job in itself, just removing all the plastic and, and all that and... Um, removing the batteries so these are just the uh, sensors and these are obviously keypads and all i want is the um out of these the, the mid-grade board is not much of a board and there's also an lcd screen that i put into low grade and uh yeah I'm, so th that's all i'm going to do uh until i process all of this these are really easy and um, gives me a lot of plastic to deal with but uh, that's okay and uh, it's just a little process it's it's very monotonous work this so as you can see not much of a circuit board really a little bit of uh, wire here and um, all I usually do is I take off these um, crystals but because these crystals are, uh, they have the black plastic and the little pins and because I've got so many, these would really, I like to take off these black plastic things but these ones are a little bit harder and taking off the pins uh, really uh, start cutting up your fingers and because there's so many, I don't really, I'm probably just going to leave them on and then just uh, throw these into the uh, the mid-grade boards and we'll just finish them off and uh, same as these ones already got the back cover off so it's just a matter of taking off the board and there's nothing really for me to depopulate the tiny little tantalum capacitors so uh, just straight into mid-grade and these ones here there's plastic that I've got to deal with and these are LCD screens. I just throw these straight into low grade and we're done with them. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a long process doing these. It'll take uh, at, least, uh, at least a few hours. Yeah, so all I'm going to do here is just take off this wire because I uh, get a little bit more money for the wire and just there. Yeah, get rid of them so uh, over the last couple of weeks I mean about or nearly a third of the bin has been done because all I've been doing is grabbing like five or six each time I had some spare time and uh, just doing them and uh, so but yeah before I continue on with the rest of the this uh, part three of the scrap video marathon. I uh, I really want to get these ones done. These ones are slightly different. They got the so the thing that um, well these ones are are time consuming because the boards are actually on screws as well so but there is one little thing that I like off these and if I can just get to it so 
this here is a, a gold band crystal oscillator it's only a small one but because I've got so many they add up and I, I like to take these I'll leave the crystals on there all I want is that so I will just put these aside and depopulate these ones because I've got so many instead of handling the uh, drill all the time because you know it's the drill's got a bit of weight to it and just for uh, just for something different exercise the hand I'll uh, I'll just do these by hand because they're pretty quick and that's it so yeah I'll put them aside these ones just get scrapped out nice and easy these and yeah there's no unfortunately there's no little crystal gold crystal oscillator on these low grade mid grade yeah so um i didn't go street scrapping on the weekend but i will go the next time around um <laughs> i figured that it, it'd be crazy for me to go out street scrapping when I've just got so much work to do. I I spent the last oh, probably two days um, just processing the circuit boards that I brought in um, that someone sold to me recently. Um, normally I don't get such a big batch in one go, especially mid-grade boards. Uh, it was just overwhelming. Like that whole whole tub there and uh, there's still more so um, but I'm not complaining because that's my side business and my new new venture is to um, buy and sell uh, circuit boards so buying circuit boards motherboards gold recovery stuff uh, off scrappers um, and then <laughs> working out myself whether most motherboards I sell straight up so it's just uh, mid-grade boards I like to depopulate some uh, some I like to take off a couple of little things mostly the gold band crystal oscillators before I, I sell them um, and just go through them because uh, you know people leave little batteries and stuff like that so I need to uh, clear off any batteries and yeah just sometimes they put a little bit too much rubbish they leave it on the boards and uh, um, oh well you know sometimes it's a bit of a loss but I, I downgrade if, if there's too much of it anyway but um, so yeah I've been doing well as far as buying circuit boards or scrappers and uh, I really like that side of the business I get to meet a lot more of the street scrappers that are out and about that that bring me the circuit boards um get to chat and uh yeah make sometimes make some contacts it's really good and uh i like to um give the uh, scrappers uh, a handful of stuff to uh, take with them uh, things that i don't feel like scrapping just got no time for you know i always ask if they want to you know want a few of whatever <laughs> just pass them on actually the last guy that bought uh, brought in all the mid-grade boards and still got uh, a lot of the the motherboards that i need to go through just got to make sure the battery's gone and uh, some of the older ones i depopulate but most of them they just go straight to my buyer um, but yeah when they came there was uh, three guys and um i gave them uh a bunch of um fluorescent lights that i had sitting around another scrapper gave me a whole bunch of fluorescent lights and um i just i got so many in the shed as well brand new in box so um i've been giving the, these ones away slowly so i had three left so um that's just three more things out of the garage that i don't have to deal with um this one's a bosch 
a little bit different. Uh, these ones, I actually, I like these ones. I haven't got as many of these, but um, yeah. Uh, I'll show you when, when I get to them. It's uh, just uh, what's on the circuit board. I just like the little little set of so these these ones with the LCD screen this parts a mid-grade but with the LCD screen it's low grade so I take off the LCD okay throw that into low grade because it does have a chip under this black blob and some little tantalum capacitors um, but uh, yeah this one's got one of those little switches with the gold legs so I like to um, take these I just put these in with IC chips because they do have quite a bit of gold plating inside these um, better than a lot of IC chips so um, I don't worry about them when they don't have gold legs but when they do I, uh, I like to take them off before I throw the rest in mid-grade they can have that so um, I got the uh, rubbish going out today so I wanted to at least put a one good bag of this stuff um, that's all you can really do with it because no one wants it as recycling so um, yeah what can you do so it's basically rubbish but at least you know I'm not you know throwing out the whole thing I'm taking out the main contaminant and keeping that out of landfill and But unfortunately, there's not much you can do with plastic. I mean, these were going to go originally into secure landfill, right? So they were just going to go in landfill anyway. Um, but the uh, the guy was good enough to contact me and ask me if I wanted to um, destroy them instead and scrap them out completely. And uh, so kill two birds with one stone. Um, gave me a little bit of extra work some extra scrap and at the same time um, in, instead of going into secure landfill I at least take out the the bad component of it which is the circuit boards and turn it into a, a valuable resource you know because um, even though they're reasonably low as far as gold recovery, but there are, you know, a lot more metals here, you know, aluminium and copper and lead and tin and uh, silver and so kills two birds with one stone and everyone benefits from this. But yeah, so. I won't keep going, I'll uh, come back to this part three of this marathon uh, when I've completed uh, a lot of this and I want to get down into that uh, into the end of that wheelie bin so uh, probably only I noticed there's at least one camera in here there's probably a few in there mixed in um, this would have been a really, you know, this is a really good one. Uh, spinner. Mind you, I have kept some of these cameras. You know, I haven't uh, scrapped them all out. Um, I couldn't really sell them or anything like that. I had to destroy them, but uh, for myself, I've kept some of the best brands and the best models. Um, I've probably got a couple of these ones also uh, in case I ever want to set up a surveillance security system probably not but you never know at least I've got one and so yeah just a bit of a board in there it's only basically reasonably low um, might be worth just taking a couple of components off it it looks like a motor there 
Well, you know, it's hard to handle when it's, I've only got one hand and it's spinning on me. There we go. So, yeah, it's pretty much, even though it's a green board, it's, it's not a mid-grade board. It's just a, a low-grade board. But there is one really nice gold crystal oscillator here, gold band. So we definitely want that. And you can also take these uh, set of pins here. Um, and then the rest would go into low-grade. Uh, unfortunately, that's all you can do with it. So, just try and work out how to get into the rest of this. Small screwdriver. Get this cover off. So yeah, um, there'll probably be a street scrapping video just before this. Um, because I, I'm just starting this part three of this scrap marathon and it's probably going to it takes me quite a while simply because uh, to get enough uh, content on the video um, it's a it's a lot of uh, work and there's no point in me doing a video of just processing all this you've seen me do quite a few right now that's enough and then I've got to spend a quite a few hours in processing the rest in between going out and doing uh, e-waste pickups and stuff like that so it's really hard to get uh, the time to uh, do everything all at once to get out the video really reasonably quickly you know so so this is one of those ones that you know almost tempted to just do a smash and grab but I'll try my best to work out how to get the rest out. So it would have been a really nice um, camera, but like I said, I, I I do have quite a few of these um, that I've reserved for myself. I want this little motor. Quite a nice little little motor. Yeah. Another one there. Not a lot here. It'd be a little board inside the camera box part. Yeah, there'll be a little Yeah, it's just a tiny little board. I'm probably not even gonna waste my time with this. It's just uh too fiddly to, to bother with. I will take this extra motor out. So these cameras, yeah, you know, um uh, unfortunately uh, I couldn't sell them so that's where the real value is. Um, you know, no point in going on about why I couldn't sell them. It's uh, you know data uh, secure destruction. So that was the contract to securely destroy. So, um, but there we go. Got a couple of motors out of it. The rest. Yeah. Not much here. So, oh well. I didn't have to accept it, the stuff if I didn't want it. I did all right out of some of the stuff. Um, some things I could get away with in um, reusing or um, kind of getting value out of them anyway. But yeah, just junk. All right.
I'll go back to these things. What's this? So this was uh, me going halfway through a camera. So I'll get a couple of boards out of there. But this is all I'm going to be doing now. Alright guys, I'll get back when uh, I've done a lot of these things. Okay, well I've emptied out this bin finally. And uh, it did take me a while, mostly just to get rid of the the plastic as I was going. I didn't want a uh, two bins full of plastic. <laughs> so I had to just go at uh, uh, the pace that I could get rid of the plastic as well. So I just took most of it to my buyer, who's a larger recycler, and uh, some of the plastic he actually shreds up and uh, he can sell. And so he puts it in with his uh, keyboards and mice and all that sort of stuff shreds it all up so any little bits of steel um, they magnetize it out when he uh, sends it off to the other guy so good all right well now that i've got this bin empty um, i've got a lot of stuff on the ground in this garage that i need to uh, get out the way first and um, at the same time clear off a lot of this um, bulky stuff some of it uh, I need to put clean up and put into my own collection uh, like all these gaming consoles I've got PlayStation 3s and 2s and uh, Xboxes and Wii's um, and I've got laptops stacked up that I need to uh, put aside because uh, my buyer is going to come in a couple of weeks time and uh, um, have a look at all them so I've got a lot of these uh, copper stackers that uh, I need to process and get the copper stacker out and uh, get rid of the aluminium. I've got transformers from micro uh, microwaves and all that kind of stuff. Now they're all over the ground and they're, um, you know, virtually every couple of days I'm throwing a few copper stacker heat sinks um, on the ground. So that's what I'm going to do is just load up this bin. I've just put it here so. Once I fill this bin up with uh, all this sort of stuff and transformers, it's not going to go anywhere, but that's exactly where I want it because once my bench is cleaned up, this is where I start processing my copper stackers and, um, because I got access, I'll have access to my vice, you know, things like that to get the copper coils out, all this kind of stuff, uh, big copper, copper transformers from microwave ovens they're all got to go in pretty much everything and yeah. so once they're filled up with uh, uh, most of them uh, that bin's not going to go anywhere so that's all I'm kind of going to be doing for now got buckets of them Uh, uh, yeah, tons of the stuff. So at least that'll get rid of, uh, clear up some of the floor space, and uh, then we'll uh, move on to scrapping a few items that I find. I might actually take these out, and I'll, I'll probably start wrapping these boxes they're they're kind of military kind of things uh, synthesizer electrical frequency yeah but the place I got them from said you know they're they're kind of military grade boards you can see here the it's uh it's like silver solder, but it's coated in like a, a lacquer. Uh, but the boards in here, they're also, they're pretty good, but they're just very fiddly to scrap out. Um, takes a bit of work. So what's there? Five there. There's a couple more here. That's seven, and I've already, um, I've already done a few of them. And uh, yeah, I'll give you a look at the little circuit boards. Um, like I said, they're, they're, 
They're military grade, but they're only small. They're nothing really, really super special, but they're pretty cool. And yeah, I'll get into them. Um, but I, I have been going through a lot, like all the motherboards that were here. Um, I got rid of them. All the circuit boards that was on the ground, I got rid of. So I'm doing well in in this little stage. Uh, this week I took in two of these tubs full of mid-grade boards so that was awesome and two two tubs of uh, motherboards and slot cards mixed up and as you can see I'm already a third of the way into this is all just slot cards and uh, And motherboards will just go on top. I get the same price for slot cards and motherboards. And these are all the slot cards that I just on sell. I don't uh, scrap these ones out. Um, so yeah. So uh, yeah, a good uh, cash out payment this week. Probably about uh, close to $3,000 for motherboards and mid-grade boards. As well as uh, laptops and... Um, what are hard drives? A lot of hard drives too, a quarter of a ton of hard drives. This is a low grade board that's got to go out eventually. But uh, all right, so we're finally going to make a bit of a, a dent in this garage. So all I'll do, leave it with me and let me just start tidying up this stuff, clear out at least some of this. Uh, uh, I think I need another bin, so I might even start processing a second bin and uh, get them so I can maybe put these game consoles in there till I work out what I'm going to do but I've got good good Dell laptops that need to uh, um, be just wiped up a bit and worked out which ones are going to be resale which ones are, are going to uh, just go as scrap got these Still got a couple of these. I managed to give away a couple. I think they're awesome. Um, you know, Department of Defense. They're restricted use. So, um, you know, they, they just use them for testing and stuff like that. They're no longer, uh, they're decommissioned. So, um, but uh, I think they're awesome for someone's workshop or someone that's into electronics that wants uh, a bit of decoration. I think they look really, really awesome. Got giant military uh, colored uh, heat sinks. It's all just a camouflage color. Really cool. Yeah, all right. Well, leave this to me. Let me uh, get all this stuff off the ground and at least uh, I'll be able to get into this doorway to make a good start. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we're going to do pretty good once... Uh, once we start getting into it, the video should be a little bit more interesting. All right, then, just wanted to do one of these military type boxes just to uh, have a little look. I'm not really sure what it is. Um, it's got a couple of uh, jacks for plug something in. But, yeah, as I said, I got quite a few of them from uh, what, one of the pickups that I did. Here's, uh, yeah, what looks like silver plating, but uh, with a lot of these military grade boards, they put some kind of lacquer over the top as well. Uh, not sure why, probably just to protect it from, well, obviously to protect it from corrosion, uh, especially with silver. If it wasn't uh, covered in lacquer, you'd see the silver would be quite tarnished but in this case it's really shiny because the lacquer is protecting protecting the silver from um, getting tarnished you know um, but it's it's not as if it would be really um, easy to get the uh, silver it just depends on the solder whether it's silver solder or 
tin or nickel but i'd imagine it should be silver solder as well so it, there'd be probably good value if you could clean up the screws off the board and um go for silver recovery all i'll do is i'll keep the boards and then one day if i decide to go for silver recovery i mean if silver has to go up quite a lot for it to be worthwhile um but if it ever did it'd be uh pretty awesome to um process these boards as well as other vintage style and military style silver so that's it you know and um basically they're all just little slot cards and this is the back plane board um everything is good gold recovery even these pins the socket pins um military gray gold pins they're really really nice you know um so it's all pretty awesome and all i need to do is let's just loosen off this there's a little rod that runs through and holds all the uh slot cards in place so i just got to get rid of that There you go. Now, we can get to all these cards. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two are in these boxes. And, uh, but most of them are all really awesome. Give you a look. So you can see all the silver all over it. And look at these gold fingers. Um, you, I can run my fingers across them and it's really chunky. So military grade gold plated fingers, really, really, really awesome. Um, and so it's only up to there and then the rest, yeah, it looks like it's uh, silver plating. So uh, yeah, quite interesting. And what I'll do is I'll take the, obviously I'll take the super awesome gold pins, take the uh, IC chips, and even the IC chips are lacquered. They're ceramic ICs, but they've got a lacquer. And I'll show you inside these IC chips. They're really awesome as well. So that was one. That's uh, another one very similar. So, yeah, only one-sided. But super-duper gold pins, uh, fingers, and the ICs. It's an another one awesome a lot of silver but i love these ic chips these military style is a different one so not a lot in the fingers still i'll take them but um these these are actually tantalum capacitors really good ones the same as these little silvery ones down there they're also tantalum capacitors so we can take these tantalums and also these uh whatever they are resistors or whatever um even the small ones the military guide you can see that really nice gold plating underneath that um cap and so inside as well there'll be gold and silver these are really awesome and same as these, all these little ones. I can see that it's got a little uh, gold tag. And so if I take one off, you can see that bit of gold um, lining it. So inside there will be uh, something in there with gold plating as well. They're kind of like, well, they're not capacitors. They kind of look like it. Don't know how to go about processing them, but... Uh, one day I'll work it out, even uh, some gold pins in there, so really nice. And obviously I want to take off all these tantalum capacitors. And put them with tanties. Um, yeah, I can tell these are tantalum capacitors. Um, sometimes there's things like this that are just normal capacitors, but these are definitely... 
Um, pretty sure I can always look them up, but I'm pretty sure they're tantalum. So really nice, that one. There's another variation. So again, a tantalum capacitor, different variation. Some more of these little caps. Another tanty there. Bit of gold pins. Not bad. And this one. A little bit less in the uh, gold fingers. Um, but three ICs, a couple of little tanties, more of these little caps. So quite a bit of gold recovery there. Got these little boxes. Um, I know that this box, I'll show you one that I've already opened up because uh, it's got quite a few screws on this one. All that's really good is the uh, gold fingers here and a couple of the caps. So inside, you can see it's uh, a whole lot of uh, stuff. There would be good silver recovery in most of all that, but um, you know, I'll just go for those little gold caps um, and I'll just leave the rest. It's sort of kind of like a little bit of a power board and I'll just take off these fingers. That's all I want out of that one. And this one here, uh, this one's a bit better. So, again, we got seven really nice IC chips, the gold fingers, a couple of the little caps, a few of them around, and a couple of really tiny little tantalum capacitors, these ones. Um, so, yeah, really happy with these IC chips. And then, also, the backplane board. Okay. And so we've got the two really nice uh, gold pins setups here. These, these ones are super duper awesome. Same as these. These are actually quite good as well. If I'll just snip, snip away a bit quickly. If I can take out, give you an example. It's just, I uh, don't know if you can see it, but it's really beautiful gold plating all the way through these these do pop out just got to uh fiddle around with them same as these pins all going to come out and yeah as i said really good gold recovery can't get them out now i'll worry about them later and um and also <laughs> even on the back plane board we've got some really nice Tant tantalum capacitors three of them another one of those little caps and then these beautiful sockets with uh, really high grade gold plating in there as well so you know I'll remove with the uh, air gun I'll remove these pins and clean up this board completely and then keep these as silver recovery if silver ever goes up a lot in price it has to go up a lot in price um, for me to bother with uh, recovering silver. So, out of um, one of these boxes, and I got quite a few, got the power board. So I've got six, seven, eight boards and a backplane board. So really awesome. Um, and, you know, just check them out. You know, that's just awesome for gold recovery, those those pins, um, if I can show you, you know, that, that's just gold fingers off, off a slot card. Don't know if you're going to see the difference, but you can see that this will be very shiny. And these are flat. These are just like gold bullion, right? And, yeah. Duh. So I don't know if you can really see the difference, but 
on camera but these are super shiny well not super shiny these are about the best the the, the worst ones that i actually take off any shinier than that brighter I, I don't even bother taking off but these can't resist them and i've got so many boxes uh it's going to be a really good addition to my gold recovery fingers um you know even here's another style of uh, vintage gold fingers from a vintage slot card and even the difference here you could, might be able to tell uh it's still different military grade is as good as it gets and even this silver if it is silver i'm pretty sure um this will be quite heavy silver so it'll be uh, well worth recovering if silver becomes worth any more than 30 cents a gram <laughs> Um, but I just want to show you the IC chips, right? And so these are ceramic. They look plastic because they've got a, a, a really nice lacquer over them. Um, probably the best way to show you these is because they're ceramic, the tops of the ICs should just pop off, revealing what's inside um, because there's nothing in the tops of them. So I'll just... Uh, crack the tops off and this is actually if you're recovering um, gold from ICs yourself if you're 100% sure you're going to actually do the recovery um, then it's a good idea to to take off these caps because uh, you know it's just ceramic there's there's no gold bonding wise inside these caps okay and um, it actually starts the process of your gold recovery off because you've already removed a lot of the dead weight and the ceramic that you don't have to crush up or process. You want the the bottom part of the ceramic where the your main cap is and your your bonding wires inside um, might be in, in you know in but underneath that ceramic anyway. But uh, I'll just sort of scrape away a little bit. Uh, should be all right so you can see inside the little caps you know inside that you can see that beautiful gold and these are even better gold than a lot of the ICs that I get with these little caps uh, some of the vintage ones um, it's just really again really pronounced gold like the gold fingers um, and so these ceramics IC chips are, are super duper um, you know really good gold recovery and um, you know because I've removed the, the the main dead ceramic out of that, you know, by weight, you get really good gold recovery. So that's why I'm saying, um, if you're not sure you're going to recover gold from your IC chips, but you're depopulating IC chips, keep them complete. Uh, if you can, these ones, even trying to um, normally remove the IC chips, they're just the tops are popping off so you'd have to do it a little bit more carefully but it, yeah if you're not 100 percent sure whether you're going to actually recover gold yourself and you might end up selling your ic chips then you want to keep them complete you want to keep them so you got that extra weight because people will buy them based on um the weight of the ic's but you know then again if you remove them like that and you sell them like that and you say well half of the ceramic has been removed the tops caps have been removed it'll probably you know you'd want much higher value for these ICs um, but and here's what happens when you remove them from the the legs the legs kind of stay on the board and that's good and all you're really mostly left with is just that part of the IC so the legs are gone and this is the base so the legs sort of are sandwiched in between the two pieces of uh, ceramic and they're only like tin legs or you know nickel so it's the center part here that we want um, these are really awesome so I'm glad I've got so many of these and I'm just going to uh, finish off scrapping these out and uh, <laughs> and all I'll do for now is I'm not going to bother depopulating all these. I've got a long way to go before I'm uh, gold recovering, so I'm going to put these aside like that 
um, the only ones I'll take off is this one process put these in the pile and uh, yeah so that's all I'm doing for the next hour is uh, removing all these and um, that'll be another thing out of the garage out the way and we'll we'll get on to something else okay well I've just uh, cleaned up some more boards that I've bought in um, they seem to be coming in thick and fast so uh, they're slowing me down every day but uh, I can't avoid buying boards because that's my business and I need to keep keep doing that so um, but surprisingly it's it's looking pretty good uh, we're gonna really get into the nitty-gritty of it now uh, just cleared out some laptops that I've had stockpiled in the garage so it's another thing out the way and uh, some recent pickups these Lenovo's and Acer school laptops uh, I've put them all out here because I've got a my buyer coming to um, uh, take a look at everything and hopefully buy as much uh, of this as possible uh, all in ones like the Dell all in ones they got i5s inside so they should do okay i picked up these big dell um all-in-ones that are i3s not sure if he's going to want them they've got little chips on on the the outside of the glass so be hopefully he'll take them i'll get rid of them cheap a uh, lot of the ipads uh, so uh, should get okay money for them if he buys them yeah really hoping he buys these little school ones just to clear them out some apples a uh, mixture of laptops i got uh, quite a bit of ram for him to buy uh, a lot of two gigabyte ram sticks and uh, uh four gigabyte ram sticks and uh, just a few eight gigabyte ram sticks so um yeah, he sort of sets a, a fair price and he, he just buys the whole lot. So hopefully he gets them. And uh, yeah, so not as much as I would normally have for him. But because I'm trying to do this scrap marathon and clear out everything, uh, I just wanted to get stuff out the way, especially these uh, all-in-ones that just take up too much room. They're just sitting around. I've got a couple more inside and just to get rid of the laptops what he doesn't buy i'll just uh, sell a scrap i'll just remove the ram and yeah sell a scrap and get rid of them uh things are starting to you know i just emptied uh two bins of each of the mid-grade and the motherboards they're already both half full so uh, the server and laptop boards are starting to fill up this is a uh, the most valuable tub when I fill it up it's really good got stuff everywhere still got all this scrap steel that I need to get rid of but the most main reason why I uh, called him up is because I just did another pickup in an office and it's all just monitors they're in Dell boxes but they got new Dells and they were they had um, Aces and Lenovo's so they're really nice big monitors and um, there's at least 50 uh, there's two in every box so I uh, got some stands there is a box in here with uh, a mixture of stuff but um, hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll go and do another pickup from this place and they're going to have uh, some nice PCs and IT equipment but they just wanted to get rid of these monitors first and uh, so they were just in the city so I popped in there picked them all up so this is the main reason why my buyer is coming because I want him to buy these and I'll give him the monitors with the boxes so I don't have to deal with the boxes and uh, you know it doesn't matter what I get even if the you know a few dollars each it'll just um, well there's 50 of them at least so it'll still give me a little bit of cash flow from that and yeah that's probably the good thing about uh, this buyer is that uh, everything he buys he pays cash so it's just a little bonus and uh, sometimes he can buy quite a lot like you know the RAM they add up quite a few there uh, what I've got 60 about 184 2 gigabyte sticks 66 fours and three eights all right well I'm just going to wait for him to come he's uh, going to be here any minute and yeah just fingers crossed that he buys most of this stuff
and uh, I can get rid of it. I've got some more apples down the bottom there, some nice little, um, yeah, apple laptops. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we go. But, yeah, just not as much as what I normally have, and normally I have a lot more really nice, fancy laptops, but, um, you know, pickups have been a bit slow. So, uh, yeah, let's hope for the best. Here's a good start. The van's completely empty. 50 monitors in 25 boxes all gone yay that was a super bonus for me not have to uh, deal with them in any way either take them anywhere else my buyer bought them all and uh, straight up we put them straight into the truck and then we went on to uh, the laptops and everything and this is what's left <laughs> As you can see, there's very little here. We just got a few uh, laptops that were rejected. These are no good for, to him. They're just a little bit too old. Uh, even these um, apples, these ones are uh, slightly too old for him. They're no good. But some of them are, you know, uh, are really good. I, I'm not sure where I got these ones, but uh, yeah they're only worth scrap um but there was a couple one that i got a hundred dollars for and another one i got a hundred and forty dollars for so that's okay um these ones just go as scrap if i can't sell them to my buyer no one else will buy them um the ram i did sell a lot of the ram like all the most of the four gigabyte ram sticks went except 10 and then um, only about half or less than half of the two gigabyte RAM sticks sold because now he's changed up and uh, instead of just buying two gigabyte RAM they've got to be DD, DD, DDR3 he no longer buys DDR2s they're just no no value to him or anyone really um, so yeah he passed up on all the DDR2s simply because they just he just can't use them for anything and um but that's okay well that, actually that's probably one he missed because it looks like a ddr3 yeah the difference is that usually it's oh no oh yeah you see the ddr2s it's, it's all about this little slot and where the ddr3s the slot is in a, a little bit left of center so that's the difference and uh, most of the pcs uh, that he deals with require ddr3 ddr2 just too old so unfortunately um i can't can't do anything with these so all ddr2 uh two gigabytes they're finished as well um even even uh, DDR, uh, 4 gigabyte DDR2s are no good, but I'm pretty sure he's missed a couple here, but it doesn't matter. So all I'm going to do from now on is, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably won't even bother with the 2 gigabyte sticks. I'll probably just uh, send them all off to scrap rather than going through and trying to work out DDR3, DDR2. And I'll just keep the DDR4s and let him sort them ones out. Uh, even, oh yeah, some of the DDR3s, um, he doesn't want the ones with, that come from servers. So where there's a number and it says PC3 uh, 10600R, the R apparently means for a server. So L and S are for PCs or laptops, but the R, he reckons, stands for server. And he can't do anything with the server ones. Um, so, a bit complicated. That's why I'm going to just forget about 2 gigabyte sticks from now on. And just focus on 4 gigabytes and above. I had a few 8 gigabytes. But yeah. So, but as you can see, all the... Uh, most of the laptops went. The small ones. Some surprising ones. He bought, you know, for... 10 bucks each that were half broken. He just bought them for parts. Uh, he bought the, all the all-in-ones. Um, I had a few extra inside. 
uh, a few other little bits and pieces I had in the garage he also bought so it's really good it just uh, it's really helpful that um, you know I've got a, a good buyers like this to come and just um, you know can take most of what uh, he, you know he's only left what six laptops seven laptops or eight uh, that you know he can't do anything with and that's fair enough if they're too old they're too old it's simple as that the if he can't sell them then um, well probably well I certainly can't uh, so yeah like uh, Intel Celeron uh, XP uh, he did take some with XP's but uh, yeah and surprisingly even though some of these apples look really nice uh, just uh, yeah just a little bit too old and just not worth worrying about uh, even though it's a PowerBook G4 you know it would have been nice in its time but it's just a few years out of date to um, get any you know any value for it so anyway but it turned out pretty good in the end 3966 that's pretty good for a, a quick um, a quick sale well you know it takes a couple of hours to go through it all and then another hour to load everything in but you know that's not bad a lot of hundreds all right not bad for uh, a bit of cash 39.66 can't complain with that I think I gave him a dollar off I gave him a couple of things for free as well um, but everything he buys you know he'll just say okay this laptop 10 this one 20 22 25 31 17 27 <laughs> it just goes like that um, so you know they come to me for free and uh, yeah so uh, no now I can uh, relax a little bit I've gotten rid of uh, a lot of uh, space I had uh, all those laptops stacked up and uh, yeah bits and pieces in the garage so now I'll get back to this scrap marathon good and proper and uh, I'll start scrapping a few more things out and um, yeah, I reckon by the end of this video, we'll uh, have a dent in this garage big time or by the next uh, part four of this video, we'll probably, uh, yeah, be able to walk in at least. But, you know, I can only do what I can do. There's only so much time in a day. So let's get back scrapping and, um, yeah, get, up, get on to business. Okay, so next thing I'm going to scrap is this uh, giant Hisense flat screen TV. So um, I'm just going to put it on the table and get into it. I just picked this up off uh, from an office. It's unusual. It's got a white back. Um, so I've got to get rid of it. And I've got another little one here that I need to get rid of because I want to do a scrap steel run and um, yeah, get rid of some of this junk um, before I can continue on. So it's uh, really windy today and it's really hot. It's over 100 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit or 40 plus Celsius today so uh, yeah bit of a workout today trying to uh, scrap stuff in the heat but I'm only going to do a few things so let's get on with this one okay well I've just undone the screws to make it a bit quicker have a look at this oh wow how big is the TV and look what's there just um, basically three boards and uh, the TCON boards under there I'm I'm not going to bother undoing the outside cover and loosening off the TV just to get that little TCON board I might as well just get the three main boards and uh, and call it a scrap I mean how's that gone are the days when you know even when we had the old plasmas everywhere and they were plasmas were just chock a block full of boards everywhere. So uh, just goes to show. You know, it's obviously the reason why uh, I don't like to pick up flat screen TVs off the street because they're just not worth it i only take them when i have to take them when i'm doing a e-waste pickup or something but uh aside from that 
I'd rather not deal with them. You know, even though, you know, it's reasonably heavy in scrap steel, so there's some value there, I suppose. But um, with scrap steel being so low in value um, at the moment, uh, it's yeah, it's just not worth picking them up. Got one little BGA chip here, and uh, yeah. Just a mid-grade board. Another one here. So, well, the main thing is I get rid of it and it's just another thing out the way. And I'll just keep scrapping, you know, going on to the next thing and the next. I'll do the other uh, LCD TV that I got there and Even though it's a smaller TV, it'll probably have more than what's what's in this one anyway. So yeah, just a a, a partial scrap really. Not worth going into the to get any tiny little boards. Yeah. Pretty much nothing there. Big chunk of rubber got to remove so that's just a mid-grade board as well and just a power board Yep, just a regular power board, low grade. Well, that's it. That's about the quickest television scrap you'll get. Um, as I said, it's just not worth going into right into it just to get a tiny little board there and the finger strip boards will be somewhere along the top here. Again, just not worth it. Might as well just uh, close it up and uh, be done with it. So just a low grade board, barely a mid grade board and a couple more there. Uh, value wise, not worth picking these up on the street. Um, but you know, Beggars can't be choosers, so if you're running out of scrap and you you know you're trying to get as much scrap as you can, well, um, if you're prepared to pick these up, even you know, probably uh, even if it was almost half the size of this, you probably wouldn't lose much in the way of circuit boards. But you know, you still got scrap steel, so if you're still looking for scrap steel, even though the prices are so low, that's uh, you got a bit there. I'll just screw this back on and send it off to scrap steel. Okay, got this LG LCD. It's only got a plastic back. So, uh, well, probably as expected, it's probably slightly better than the, the that huge high sense simply because it's got a little bit heavier boards in it looks like a big one be able to get to the TCOM board there so interesting oh. but it's all part of scrapping and if you enjoy you know what you're doing if you enjoy scrapping and uh, even though a, a lot of things can be quite low value um, you're still getting you know the fun out of it I suppose it can't all be high value stuff like IT equipment and you know telecom equipment 
Um, most of the scrap we get is pretty low value, but at least we've got the TCOM board. The thing I like about TCOM boards is that they do usually have really nice chunky MLCCs. So they're the only things that I get, the nice chunky MLCCs. The rest, you know, as you can see, it'll just be a, a mid-grade board. Um. Yeah, but if it's uh, circuit boards and uh, value that you're trying to get out of e-waste, which is basically it, um, I suggest keep an eye out for your old plasma type TVs because even though they're really heavy to move around a lot of the weight is uh, in all the circuit boards you know even though there's a lot of power boards in there you know in a plasma but the power boards and even though they, they don't work they're not worth that much you do get a lot of weight and uh, if you're just after copper and aluminium and stuff well, you certainly are uh, worth depopulating, de you know, these aren't too bad, you can always take off these aluminium heat sinks, get good money for them, the transformers, and uh, yeah, once you've taken off all the valuable stuff you can sell to the scrapyard, the rest would just go to scrap steel, pressing steel, low grade, otherwise it's just a low grade board, if you are not into depopulating boards, then uh, it's just low grade to sell to me 22 cents a kilo so really not worth dragging around low grade boards to sell you're better off taking off the good bits and just throwing the rest in scrap steel next time you go to the scrap yard um, but you know again uh, not a bad uh, mid-grade board simply because it does have a lot of chips and it also has a lot of heavy dead weight so it's a good balance if it didn't have many chips and all this dead weight it'd almost go as low grade but because it does have a lot of chips um, it's a really nice heavy good heavy board even got some chips on the back here i uh, got a just noticed a, a gold band crystal oscillator that i i'd definitely like to take and and the rest would just go as a mid-grade board yeah good at least it's a nice heavy one and there's more heavier wire in this one so obviously the newer we go the uh, the less value we get so you see a nice fancy um, two or three year old TV you think oh this will be good to scrap well probably not <laughs> Uh, but again, I keep uh, stressing that it, it really depends on what level of scrapping you're at. Uh, some scrappers have found avenues to get um, a lot more e-waste, whereas others just get whatever they can get. So if that's you, then you're, yeah, just go for it. Every little bit helps, you know. Uh, yeah, so there'll be a strip board in there, but it's just not worth, in my case, to go down any further. The rest I can leave, it's just scrap steel. Beautiful. Should even be able to get away with putting this plastic cover back on and getting rid of it as scrap steel. All right, let's go on to something different. Okay, remember this uh, Vibro fit that I picked up off the street uh, during street scrapping one day, and uh, I've been meaning to scrap it out. It was just sitting on the side in the garage, so uh, good thing to get rid of right now. Um, obviously, it's some sort of vibrating pad that you stand on. Um, interesting so we'll just have a little look see what's inside one I've never seen one scrapped out 
and If it's anything like the Wii Fit, there's uh, probably not going to be a great deal in here. Uh, okay. Looks like I just have to... Get these big screws out. See if that helps. Yeah, so I'm, I'm getting through stuff. At the same time, keeping up with um, the business side of things. So, really happy with the, uh, the sale of all the laptops and all that, mostly because it just clears out that space and I can uh, start building up things again. Um, it should start getting a little bit busy now heading up towards Christmas from schools. So hopefully I get a few good pickups before the end of the year and um, there's no more street scrapping. So uh, yeah, it's not going to it's going to give me a chance to at least Finish off uh, the garage clean out and um, Probably have a, a break over the Christmas period for a week try not to do too much and uh, Yeah, and then get back into it and I should be uh, totally on track at the start of the year It should be awesome. Can't wait. So I'm not totally sure in how to open this up. Yeah, doesn't seem to have done <laughs> much. I might see if I take off this actual top pad there might be screws here faults though always something a bit tricky so they've certainly put this together pretty well guess because people are standing on it it needs to be pretty pretty solid and pretty uh, evenly distributed so. That should be it. Okay, there we go. All right. A lot of plastic. And uh, yeah, we've obviously got the motor here for the vibrating. 
Um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Okay. It looks like under these rubber stands. Ah, that was it. That was what we needed to. Uh, that's all they are. off okay that looks some kind of control box or something But when I saw it on the street, I thought, oh, well, I didn't expect there to be much in here. But uh, just simply because I've never scrapped one or even seen one before, I thought, well, what the heck? I might as well just take it and uh, just have a look. We'll see what's inside this. Uh, looks like uh, it might be uh, power or... A little power supply board probably in there. Yep. Yeah, just a power supply board. All right. And. Clean up some of this stuff. speaker on here. I'll just take it off to flatten it out a bit. Easier to get rid of the plastic. And that's it. So yeah, it's uh, similar um, in scrap value to the Wii sort of uh, that Wii pad. Um, really nothing there. I mean, it's, it is a nice chunk of steel, that's for sure. Um, and it's just that one motor underneath. And uh, it looks like quite a, quite a nice little motor actually. We'll, um, I'll leave this plug. Okay, so it's just a matter of getting, save me looking for some Allen keys. There's our little motor, and it looks like quite a nice little Japanese motor. Or is it? Maybe it might be Chinese. This one. That's quite a decent little motor, actually. 
quite pretty. Might just put these screws back, but uh, yeah, I'll just keep the wire. And uh, I'll half the plug anyway, the main part of the plug. Yeah, not a bad little motor, but you know, not a great deal here. I don't want to really pull this apart to try and get this spool. There's no point in pulling all this apart. I don't want this whole mechanism anyway. But the motor might come in handy for something. Um, yeah. So there we go. Just a power board. Just a small one. But a decent uh, motor. And uh, probably a, a, a keeper for now. Because I do get guys wanting things like that. And I trade up for, for circuit boards and stuff like that. So that was the Vibro Frit Pro. Very interesting. I suppose there's a little uh, LCD board here. It's not going to uh, change the world. But we get it. Yeah, just uh, I'll just throw that into low grade um, LCD board. So quite a lot of plastic in the end, and it's quite big plastic, so not really easy to get rid of. Uh, a decent chunk of steel, that's for sure. So at least we get some value back for that. But the main thing I'm happy with is this uh, nice motor and uh looks like uh, 180 volts uh, 2400 rpm so it might come in handy for something for someone all right that was interesting and uh yeah i mean it was it's so easy and quite you know quite cool to scrap out so if i ever see these again i'll, I'll definitely pick them up you know just to get this nice motor out and uh yeah the only thing is dealing with all this plastic but hey you got to take the good with the bad all right uh i want to get onto some gaming consoles that i've just got in a whole bunch and just work out which ones i want to put into my collection and which ones i'm going to scrap out okay so uh, this is a bunch of uh, gaming consoles that just came in from Mostly from one scrapper, but a couple from another scrapper as well. Um, so I'm just trying to work out what to do with these. I've uh, I temporarily put them into the garage. And uh, yeah, so now I'm just taking them back out. I'm going to uh, keep the ones that I want uh, to put as part of my game console collection. Um, mostly I'm building up like obviously i want the best one of each different gaming console for my personal uh little collection and then the rest uh i'll have uh probably do a big bulk sale and sell a whole lot of gaming consoles in one go when i'm probably when i'm done scrapping they tend to go down in value uh once there's a later model come out but then as they get older they kind of appreciate in value a bit again um it just varies i just uh just like to keep them because they're fun so um the first thing i've noticed i've got three different playstation threes now i knew there was two different ones i wasn't didn't know about the third one and or whether i've got one um i probably have but i just never noticed it before so i've got these big playstation threes okay so these are probably um seem like the better ones uh doesn't tell me what year but so there's four of these playstation 3s and then these big bulky playstation 3s i don't know why they made two different ones um so i just want to check these out but uh i'm not going to keep this one it's all scuffed up and stuff so uh i'll probably just scrap this big one out uh i'll probably scrap out one of the regular playstation 3s and then this one yeah that's the most unusual one it's a very small one um 
so it might be just an entry level Sony uh, PlayStation 3 um, or just a small version I don't know why they made three different PlayStation 3's so if anyone knows about that um, I'd be interested in knowing about the, the smaller PlayStation 3 and uh, I'm pretty sure this big chunky one is the older version it looks like the older version that looks a little bit more sleek so yeah because this one's been thrown around all scuffed up pretty bad condition um, I'll uh, scrap this one out this one looks like it's a little bit scratched up still but yeah, it's, it's got this little flip thing and uh, and it it looks in okay condition so PlayStation 3 okay they kind of look the same although this one might be uh, it doesn't have the PAL on it so it, it might be a international model who knows so that's the PlayStation 3's I got a couple of PlayStation 2's but I got this little one I don't think I've seen you know because they're so small I probably never spotted one in uh, hard rubbish or anything um, it's in okay condition I'll probably keep it because I don't think I've got one so until I get a better one because um, it does look like it was left out in the rain or something so um, I'll keep that one for now I do have these ones in my collection and this one is uh, it's sort of already been opened up and uh, yeah so um, and it's a little bit busted up so I'll scrap this PlayStation 2 and yeah just keep this one for now um, and I've got heaps of uh, these Wii's this looks a little bit different than the normal Nintendo Wii's they it might be the same it just uh um yeah I just probably a bit confused so I'll just keep this I got a lot of these but I'm not going to scrap it out and then the Xboxes quite a lot <laughs> mostly these white ones uh, so I'm definitely going to scrap one of these out or probably three at least three of these out <clears throat> Um, because the only ones I'm going to keep are these two here with uh, they've got the hard drive still in there and then I'll keep the best one out of the other four uh, probably this one here it doesn't have a hard drive but uh, it looks like it's in okay condition some of these uh, are already like missing uh, front cover and stuff like that so they're the white Xbox 3's I think they're the 32 gigabyte ones I've uh, got one black one and uh, oh, sorry they're the 64 gig there's a 120 gig hard drive so at least this one's got the hard drive in there as well uh, I do have really good condition ones of these in my collection but I'll keep this one simply because there's only one compared to six white ones so keep one of them at least two maybe three Xbox white ones scrap three out and then I got this smaller Xbox I don't think I've ever got one of these ones either um, it's the Xbox 360 S so it might be just the S stands for small um, I don't know what the story is with these but it's a little bit different because it doesn't have the external hard drive that sits on the top just a little bit different and uh, so I'm happy to keep this one in with my uh, collection so I think this will be the first one I've ever got of the 360 S so if anyone knows anything about that one <laughs> and then the uh, old Xbox uh, not a bad condition nothing spectacular it's actually it's missing a bit of a uh, couple of bits so I'll, I'll keep it uh, until I work out how many I've actually got because I've got my gaming consoles what I do is I get a box and I fill them up with the consoles the cords plugs anything uh, gaming games 
and then I just seal the box up and put it away as gaming consoles and one day I'll just go through all the boxes that I've got and uh, work out what I'm going to do so I'll keep that keep these two keep three white ones uh, probably keep at least two of these one of them keep that keep that and scrap that so let's scrap a few out uh, it's been a long time since I've scrapped uh, these consoles they can be a bit complicated sometimes and because I prefer not to scrap them out uh, I prefer to keep them but yeah all right let's scrap a few out and have a bit of fun okay so I'm going to do these three uh, here PlayStation 2 PlayStation 3 and an Xbox 360 and then I'll do the others off camera that I'm going to scrap out okay since this one's already open I might as well start on this uh, yeah it looks like all the screws so someone started to scrap this out I think so that's good <laughs> saves me a bit of time you just have a little look what's inside these gaming consoles I think I've done a few over time but it's been a while and I've even forgotten so yeah not a lot here just a bit of junk there's a main board switch out so I'm getting there guys slowly uh, but surely and for a bit of luck um, I won't be too distracted and I'll be able to get a few scrap marathon videos out the way okay well there's a little power board the um, hard drives obviously been taken out of this already so no extra value there But yeah, like to me, gaming consoles uh, are just, I just enjoy collecting them, keeping them. Um, as you can see, we're probably not going to get a whole heap of scrap value. And, you know, usually, you know, I'm scrapping these just to have a look and, and stuff. And because I've got to get rid of them, I don't have room to uh, sit them around. But... Uh, in a lot of cases, you, you know, your gaming consoles, worst comes to worst, you could always just uh, sell them as even just for parts. Yeah, because there's always people uh, restoring them and stuff, and all right, they might not be worth a lot, but if even if you've got them as parts, if you build up a. Oh, sorry, my battery just went flat. <laughs> but as I was saying, you. Yeah, if you can build up a decent sized box of um, even broken down, broken up consoles, someone will still buy them as a whole bunch, you know. So this is just basically the DVD drive. There's nothing in, in that. Uh, this is the main part we want. Uh, yeah. Um, and that goes for all the power cords that come with gaming consoles. Um... And especially all the games, uh, even the really oddball games from, you know, Xboxes, Playstations, and um, what have you. The really oddball ones can turn out to be the most uh, valuable ones because uh, uh, people just didn't buy buy them as much, and they uh, or didn't keep them. Uh, but uh, yeah, all games, never throw out your games because uh, they end up being, some can turn out to be super collectible and well worth uh, hanging on to till you can at least sell them as either individually or just as a complete thing. and. And that's probably what I'll end up doing with my gaming consoles. 
there's very small screws here is just uh, keep all the ones the best ones for myself for my own collection as well as the games make sure I've got all the cords that I need and then um, sell the, the rest as just one big gaming console package I've done it before uh, but you know I've got a couple of beauties you know for my personal collection I got that Amiga 1000 that I picked up street scrapping a few years ago you know yeah well nice board not highly valuable as far as uh, scrap value is concerned but still just wondering how to get this shield off there we go so there's a little bit of brass here and some aluminium heat sinks can pop out yeah just knock out these brass prongs Keep me brass all adds up you know <laughs> yeah I'll pop these extruded aluminium bits out of the steel and there's the main side of the board um, yeah quite quite a decent board actually uh, you know got two really nice BGAs the gold corn another BGA there you got one of these flat pack BGA sometimes these can be really good for gold recovery um, the silicon top ones are not very good for gold recovery but sometimes these can be really good um, not a bad board overall quite intense you know really good one to uh, depopulate if you're just into gold recovery but uh, it's up to you really happy cool well that was the little PlayStation 2 and I'll probably go on to this PlayStation 3 now and see what in, is in that. Okay, PlayStation 3. Got a feeling there's going to be some awkward torque screws in this one. So, might be a bit hard to get the right torque screw for it. Once my garage is totally organized, I'll be able to get to more of my tools. I've been missing out on some of my tools I've got around. Just can't find them. And I don't want to go and buy too many more because in a lot of cases, I've already got two or three of each tool that I need. Um, so, okay, well, there's a little hard drive in here. So I'll just try and get this out. So nice, nice little hard drive, and obviously I'm going to keep the hard drive because I'm not sure what's on them. Whether they've actually they can store games on them, whether it's big enough for that, or whether it's just uh, 120 gigabytes. So it might be just for memory to uh, memorize the higher scores and stuff like that. But I'll just keep it because uh, I don't know if I've got any that are missing the hard drives I just got to put it in a little plastic baggie and just write on it PlayStation 3 so uh, I'm not wondering what it's from later on down the track but uh, yeah just it's all about working out how to actually get into these things until I uh, do a few um, so it looks like there's some torque screws along the there. So, just see what pops pops open this way. Oh yeah, it looks like I'll be able to. Well, there's the top. Okay, well. It's a start. It's the beauty of scrapping and uh, not putting things, having to put things back together. Because I can uh, 
you can scrap out just about anything you know uh, sometimes you've got to be a bit rough but getting it back together well that's a different kettle of fish because usually end up breaking things um, it's not until you do a few of them in a row that you realize how it was best to scrap and then you can do it a bit more carefully and not uh, bust your way through but because most things that we scrap are you know reasonably low value and we're, we're not trying to keep the parts together smash and grab is a good enough way okay so it looks like we've got a, a board in here Oh yeah, looks like the power supply. Oh yeah. There we go, nice long power supply board. Pretty big board actually. For, you know, what it is. Jeez. You know, big televisions sometimes don't even have power boards that big. Okay, so I've got a feeling that we really need to get through to the other end, but maybe not. That was easy. So this is main drive very small screws now looks like we uh, might not have to use the Torx screw at all so uh, you know it's I've been a bit slow on the video because I've been so busy with everything and it's just uh, just really hard you know even to do a I don't really have any subject matter to do small scrapping videos really um, I suppose I could have done small scraps of these Xboxes and Playstations, but until uh, I, I'm in the garage, I just want to continue with the scrap marathon videos. And, um, and then really uh, do some interesting things later, towards the end of the year and through next year. So a little bit awkward scrap. It's not like PCs, I rip through a PC or a TV in, in no time. Okay, so it's just a DVD. Get the little, just, just a mid-grade board. A bit of low-grade wire. And I won't worry about the rest even. Uh, I suppose I can get this little motor out. Sell it as a motor. The rest I won't worry. This is, uh, looks like a little finger strip board. Again, tiny little screws. I don't mind unscrewing by hand sometimes, it's just a, a different motion. So when they're really small screws, yeah, it's pretty much nothing, just a little tactile switches there. Very, just low grade. All right. So, see if I can just pop this all out.
screws are so small I can't even see them. You just notice them when you're trying to pry things up and you think, oh. <laughs> and I've been a bit slow. I've, I've had to, um, I wanted to post out a few things to people, but uh, I just don't have time to go to, to the post office or to even package stuff up. So I'm trying to get onto that as well. So if you're expecting anything from me, it shouldn't be too far. We're almost there. I think we just got to take off this, see if this fan comes. Oh, just got distracted there, had the uh, battery go flat on me again and I had a couple of phone calls all at the same time so it's uh, it's not one thing it's another <laughs> so here we go okay well they've certainly uh, housed it pretty Securely Tell you what we could really do with uh, some rain around here and well it's not so bad here in in uh, in a city but uh, pretty much all over Australia it's uh, there's some areas that are really really harsh and really dry and we're having um, bushfires uh, you name it, there's uh, really catastrophic bushfires too. And there's a lot of uh, water restrictions out, out in the bush. Some places are so restricted they can barely do anything. You can only have two minute showers. Uh, it's certainly getting dry out there. All right, well, there's a pretty decent heat sink in amongst all this. So it looks like, uh, you know, we're going to be in for a very dry summer here in Australia anyway. Um, we're just in spring, had a, it's a cool change, but, um, today yesterday was scorching hot um, what do you do I suppose in the end we all survive hopefully <laughs> all right yeah so I'll just uh, do this a little bit later and uh, just get this aluminium heat sink out of this housing. But there's the board. Yeah, you know, still technically just a mid-grade board. I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't mind getting these chips, you know, because sometimes they could be really good, as I said. But, you know, once you take these chips off, then you, you're pretty much really downgrading it too much um, but might be able to get away with pinching a couple of the BGAs and the other side yeah just pinch a couple of BGAs there yeah yeah they're not bad boards interesting so not a lot I mean did have this giant uh, <laughs> you know unexpected power supply board they're only low grade so it's not much value but still but yeah yeah not bad so 
that was uh, the PS3. Uh, yeah, okay, like I said, much better to keep them as is. And, uh, but I've got too many of these and uh, most of these are broken bits and that and missing hard drives, so I don't need that many. I prefer to just keep the uh, really good ones that I get. So we'll do this Xbox 360 and we'll see how we, uh, we go with this. And if I can work out how to open it. No. Okay, looks like the cover might just pop off. See, this one was left out in the rain. It's all got, it's got rusted. So, no real good to anyone. <laughs> Obviously, there's got to be a better way, but hey. That's why I chose to be a scrapper and not a repairman. <laughs> Yeah, geez. Good old rusty case, this one. And looks like some torque screws here. Got that bit. <sighs> okay. So, this DVD drive. It's the DVD. I'll see if I can get the board out a little bit later. Okay. Well, at least basically the whole base is uh, is a board. And uh, this chicken had to get in the way. It's sort of just. Can't get this screw. Ah, that's it. That's a bit easier. Yeah, so. Virtually the whole thing is a, is a circuit board. That's pretty cool. Okay.
you go. Yeah, pretty decent heat sink here under the uh, the CPU, I'd imagine. Yeah, not bad. Uh, still just a mid-grade board. Yeah, because it's a copper aluminium heat sink. I want to get that. If it was just straight aluminium, I, I would have left it. But uh, seeing that the heat sink's worth more per kilo than the actual board. Yeah, so get that with the hand. But yeah, copper base, copper aluminium heat sink. It goes as a copper aluminium radiator. So there, it only had a silicon chip BGA under there, so that's no good. Don't want that. That's a bit better, but really, these are the ones. Yeah, just a mid-grade board, really. Nothing spectacular. I mean, hmm, yeah. If it was better, probably would have got away with it being almost motherboard grade, but it's just not that good. All right, well, that was the Xbox 360, and uh, yeah, pretty much not a lot. Um, there is another little board here I'll take off. I just need small torque screws. Uh, I'll just open this drive. Got a little board just uh these ones with the mid-grade boards just throw them straight in the mid-grade um because they don't have the gold pins so i can just throw it straight in the mid-grade but i there is a little gold band crystal oscillator there so i can take that my favorite little gold recovery thing and that's it well all right well I've just got a few more to do myself uh, to finish these off and get rid of them and uh, go on to the next thing probably. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got all this copper insulated wire here uh, from a pickup recently and um, it's a little bit uh, too thick for to sell as insulated wire because It'll probably just go as mid-grade, um, which is $2.40 a kilo. And um, But uh, as you can see, it's it's not pure copper. It's, it's tin-coated copper. So it's very much like, um, you know, your braided copper wire that you get from old televisions. Tin-plated copper wire. So... That's the same kind of stuff, except it's stranded wire. And, well, it still uh, sells as, well, it sells as tinned copper wire, which is a little bit less than um, Milbury wire. It's more like uh, burnt copper price. So, as it is, it's uh, $2.40 a kilo. And they come in like two and a half foot strips. And uh, so... Um, I think I can get about $7.40 a kilo, um, at least $7 a kilo if it's stripped. So, that's what I'm going to do. So, I'll just, uh, out of interest's sake, I'll just weigh it up. And... Yeah, I'll just put it all on the scales over here. And I'll just get a weight at uh, and uh, price at $2.40 a kilo. If I was just to sell it as, as insulated wire. Yeah. 
we'll get a idea on what I would have sold it for okay so it's 4.64 kilos at two dollars forty I would have got eleven dollars and fourteen cents uh, for this batch of uh, copper wire so eleven dollars forty uh, for a few minutes of work let's see if we can turn it into uh, more money than that <laughs> So I just done a little test run and uh, started stripping it and uh, just to get the the uh, the right pressure on the actual uh, stripper. But because when uh, I start pulling it out of this uh, insulation, the uh, it starts to you know fraze a little bit, so you lose little bits of pieces. So I'm just going to do that into the bucket. Yeah, there we go. Nice and clean PVC. And tinned copper wire. Beautiful. All right. I've done a couple. So let's uh, get into business. These are, are new and uh, I'm not sure what they were used for originally, but they've already got a little piece sort of cut where you can just start it off. So that's nice and easy. And... We'll just roll them through. you can go as slow as and fast, fast as you want it'd be nicer if it was just one continuous length but at least i can put the drill on it and uh be done with it but it's just another thing that was in the garage and waiting to be dealt with so Another thing out the way. the other side just to all right so just get my little bucket here and yeah because it's already got um, the little start I don't you know can just sort of pull it straight out Yeah. Too easy. I mean, if I only had a couple of pieces, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. But because you know, there's so much there. Um, I thought, well. You know, it'd be nicer if, if it was uh, Milbury copper wire, then I, I would just keep it, you know, as uh, melting copper. But I don't like to melt this stuff in copper bars because of the tin. 
it just contaminates the copper. I like pure copper. So. But just another job done and another thing out the way. And uh, I tell you what, we're sort of, we're really getting there with the garage. So um, it's all going to happen in one big hit once I start moving a few boxes and stuff. Uh, I'm going to be able to walk in there freely and uh, uh, can't wait. And uh, just uh, for Christmas, you know, I want to have a bit of a clean up um, before Christmas time. So, you know, I might have a barbecue or something here. So I just want everything here clean and uh, be able to tidy up this uh, whole work area that I'm um, working around. You know, the the floor needs a good sweep. There's bits and pieces under the under the table that I've got to get to clean up, and uh, yeah. But, and I suppose this is probably towards the end of the part three of this scrap marathon video. And I'm sure that part four is going to be uh, where I really wanted to be at and uh, a bit more interesting. But yeah, part four might be it. Then I'll go on to uh, maybe scrap a few, few individual things. Um, All right, well, we're getting there slowly, but it's yeah, all nice tin coated copper. And I'll keep going here and Uh, so much easier when you put the drill onto it. It's, uh... Really helps a lot. And Okay, I'll just keep going here and uh, clean all this off and um, we'll get to wait and see what we got. Okay, so I'm on my last one. Finally just finished this off. And uh, hey, it didn't take too long and because it's a little bit different to what I normally do, it's, it's quite good fun, you know. <laughs> so that's all our beautiful braided or sorry it's not braided it's just tinned copper wire so it's pretty much pure copper with just tin coating over the wire so it's still very close to um milbury but obviously it's not so this time 
instead of 240 a kilo now we're uh, uh, I just messed up the tear of the bucket so I'll just the battery's starting to go flat on this so I'll just uh, connect the power I've only actually charged it up once since I've got it okay and I, uh, I go through one of these scales every year just about because they get thrown around a bit and I should take off the plastic as soon as I get them just because the plastic gets a bit fogged up can't see very good sometimes okay so we tear down the bucket Okay, now put my copper wire back in. A couple of little bits. It's just a bit hard to see. Um, and now we're looking at at least seven dollars a kilo. So. I don't know why the lights are so faint. So anyway, so it's seven dollars a kilo. It's There's 3.15 kilos. And it looks like $22 and something cents. So we've kind of doubled the money. Um, so this was, yeah, um, yeah, not as good as I thought, but still, uh, I just don't know about these scales. They're just playing up. I'll leave them on charge. And I'll get out the, the super scales. Okay. These are the super scales. The 300 kilogram jobs. So I'll just put this tray on. And tear that out. Okay. Oh, that shows a bit better. So it looks like 3.15 kilos. Yep, at seven kilos, seven dollars a kilo. As I as I thought, twenty-two dollars and five cents. So um, yeah, we kind of doubled our money. So not too bad. Now you imagine this is a pretty good clean wire. If it was obviously if it was Milbury, it'd be worth uh, oh, probably only another three or four bucks on top of that so it's really not much difference between milbury and um burnt or candy or that it's usually only like 20 cents a kilo difference so but at least we've got i mean i'd be much happier if it was milbury then i could melt it down but i certainly wouldn't melt this down uh for copper bars because it would be tin and copper so but as I said, it's it's uh, it goes in the same batch as your braided tinned copper wire from old televisions. So it's the exact same stuff. So uh, I've already got a nice big bucket of it. I've been building up over the years. So that's a nice addition. And we've got rid of something else. All right. Well, guys, I think the video has gone on long enough for this series. It's been a while since I put a video up. So I might just end it there. Hope that was a bit of fun for everyone. Um, 
look out for the next scrap uh, marathon video coming out as soon as I can get it out. I might put a couple of short videos in in between uh, just to scrap out a couple of interesting individual things and then we'll just get back on to uh, scrapping out this garage and uh, yeah we're, we're going to get there. There's uh, all my insulated or insulation PVC that I've got to get rid of on the ground but uh, we're getting there guys and uh, yeah it's uh, start to look good all right guys well if this is the end of the uh, part three of the scrap marathon keep scrapping have fun and i'll catch you shortly